Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to update an old toy box into a chic storage solution. This video is brought to you by Heirloom Traditions Paints. I'm using finishes and paints from HeirloomTraditionsPaints.com to create this wonderful um, storage chest. I'm going to show you how to properly apply the paint, how to distress, how to stencil, and um, how to kind of pull a design together. And also I'm going to be working with my children on this, so I'll offer some tips on how to craft with your kids at the end of the video, as well as frequently asked questions questions and any troubleshooting tips. So without further ado, let's go see what this looked like before and I'll show you the transformation. Okay, I enlisted my daughters to help me with this project because this is um, their storage box for their sporting equipment. So the first thing we need to do before we undertake any sort of painting is to actually clean it. What I just have is some dish soap in warm water and um, we're just trying to remove any debris from this toy box. Stains are totally fine. We just want to get off any, you know, drips or dirt or dust or any of that stuff that is going to affect the bond that our paint makes with our project. So thoroughly clean the piece to be painted and then dry it and then we'll move on to the painting. The first thing you want to do is stir all your paint you're going to be working with. Um, and if you are working with kids, you probably want to make sure they wear old play clothes. Um, <laughs> my girls didn't want to be on camera in old play clothes, so they are wearing the regular clothes. Um, you want to say hi, Lila? Let's say hi, Maisie. Hi. You guys going to help me with this project? Yeah. Awesome. You guys going to do the whole thing for me? Yes. <laughs> we will see. All right, so once you have everything stirred, we're gonna be ready to paint. The first portion of this project is to put a coat of white paint on the top. I'm gonna to be doing a distressing back to that white paint after a few coats, so I wanna make sure I have a nice coat of white to get back to. Whenever you're working with more vibrant colors of paint, you're gonna take more coats. So on the ends, we're doing, in the back, we're doing green. We're doing this front panel red, and we're gonna border that with green. By introducing all these colors now in the background, we'll have a lot of options when it comes to adding finishing touches. Just remember, bright colors equal two coats. Look at the difference between the back of the toy box, which was raw wood, and how one coat of paint covered it really well, as opposed to this side here that was glossy painted wood. Since this had a latex enamel on it underneath, um, I'm gonna need more than one coat because that shiny, slick surface prevented that chalk paint from coating in one coat. On the back, on the raw wood, it was able to sink in and absorb and give a really nice matte finish. So anytime you're going over a piece of painted furniture that's glossy at all, you plan on doing two coats. And I also like to alternate my brush strokes on the second coat. That just gives me um, a little bit better adhesion. It, the tooth of the paint kind of grabs a little bit more paint. And also, whenever you're painting on top of chalk paint, you'll find that um, your second coat will be much more opaque because it really holds a lot more paint because the paint itself is toothy or it has more grab or bite to it when it comes to another layer of paint. I wanted to have kind of a wonky frame on the top of this box and to do that I want to make it symmetrical so I'm just kind of sketching um, uh, like a curve at each corner and a bump in the middle for the two sides and then I think I'm gonna do a curve in the middle and then two bumps on each of the long sides. I'm just freehanding it in at this point. Like I said, I'm gonna have a black center that I'm gonna do a kind of a chalkboard treatment on. So I just wanted to get this frame and I figured it'd be easier to get this frame right and then fill in with the black that would be to try to cover the black with this yellow paint. So there's a method to my madness. Now I'm gonna fill in this frame and then flesh it out if I need to by thickening it up in some areas. I just need to make sure I have enough room in the middle for a Babe Ruth quote that I wanna put on here since this toy box holds all my kids' uh, baseball gear. And now we simply outline the inside of the golden frame with black and we're filling it in with black paint. This will be distressed back, so when we sand back, we'll have the white underneath to make it look kind of chalkboardy. I thought the yellow border looked a little plain, so I'm actually going to stencil on some polka dots and I'm just kind of tapping my brush off on a piece of cardboard. And this is a, just a foam brush here. And I'm just gonna pounce on my design. If I go over the edge, it's not a big deal because it's the same color. And actually at this point, if I do get a little bit on the black, I can touch that up easily with a brush. So I'm not even gonna worry about that too much either. I'm just gonna go around and line up my stencil as I go and completely stencil this border. So I have a fun 
playful polka dot design over the gold border. The front panel on this toy box looks a little plain, so I thought I would stencil a motif on there. And I have this um, wall art stencil, and I'm just going to press this down. I have a little bit of tape here. You could also use repositional adhesive to stick it down. I'm going to stencil one half, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the other half so I have um, a symmetrical design instead of having a border. This was designed for like a wallpaper border. And to stencil it, I'm simply going to use... Um, a sponge brush because I've got one already in this color and the um, yellow that I've been using brittle brush and I'm just gonna pounce off the excess just like I did on the top and then I am just going to carefully stencil here and then when I'm done this side I will clean off my stencil flip it over and do the other side You can touch up any little areas by wiping them off with a wet Q-tip. Also, if you want more of a hand-painted look, you can go over these flourish lines with a round brush loaded up with the same color of paint for a more hand-painted detailed look. Now I'm going to clean this off, flip it over, and do the same right next to it with the opposite side of the stencil. We're getting ready to put our quote on the top of the toy box, and we're going to use some letter stamps. And these are foam stamps. Foam stamps work really well with acrylic paint um, to stamp with. And I'm going to be, I just put some of the Alamode Heirloom Traditions paint here on a piece of styrofoam that I taped to a plastic tray to use as a stamp pad. You can also use a foam stamp to ink up your letter stamps. But I'll just show you here with one of them. I'm just going to tap it on to my paint pad there. Make sure it's good and inked. If it looks like there's a little too much on there, like you've just inked your, um, your paint pad up, you can tap a little bit off. And then you just want to press it down. I'm doing this upside down, so I'm hoping that I don't mess it up. And just press straight down and apply even pressure there. There we go. And then when this is all done, I'm going to scuff it up. And I'll show you that when we get to that point. But um, what my daughter Lila did here was she arranged the different... Um, stamps just in uh, kind of letter format so we could figure out if we have enough room here and um, that was pretty easy to do wasn't it yep. <laughs> okay so we're going to stamp this out and then i'll show you how it looks when we're done don't worry if your stamping is not perfect and you can go in and um, fill in any letters that didn't stamp perfectly or even touch up any over stamped areas if you want to i actually like that it looks really uh, rustic and distressed uh, but you can do, you can make them a little more full if you want to. And you could always use a stencil if you didn't have these stamps. I've got a little beetle on there that wants to get in on the action. And then for, um, to attribute the quote, I'm just going to put a little tilde and then um, put Babe Ruth just by hand. And I'm just kind of doing a, just a little um, printing in a wiggly, um, uneven kind of form. So it's kind of similar to what I stamped here. Plus... My um, my handwriting is not the best, so I figure that if I kind of just go with a uh, rustic looking font like this, then it will look fine. Another technique you might want to try is wet distressing. So here, what I'm doing is actually rubbing this with a wet cloth until I go back to my undercoat, which was that yellow paint. Once you've sealed this though with a wax or a top coat, your paint's not going to rub off, but you do have some time here where you can distress it back and give it more of an aged look if that's what you're going for. Rinse out your rag often when you're wet distressing so you don't move paint from one area to another portion of your project. Also think of the areas that would receive the most wear and tear and make sure that's where you remove your paint from. And if you take too much paint off, you can always go in and touch it up before your final waxing or top coat. Our surface has dried after our wet distressing and now we're putting on a coat of urethane based sealer so that it can take the uh, abuse and wear and tear that it's bound to get as the kids go in and out of this box for their sporting gear. And here is the finished toy box. You can see I decided to go with the distressing and I'm pretty happy with the look, although truth be told, I think I liked it a little bit better before I distressed it. But since I hadn't done that uh, wet distressing before, I decided I would just go with it and, um, and kind of give it some time and see how I liked it over time. Now on the distressing, a quick tip is to just use a wet rag when you're distressing your chalk paint because it will take it back to that first layer as long as you haven't put the sealer on it yet. That will save you the time of sanding and then wiping off all the sanded residue. So I didn't know that before and that was a really great lesson to learn. 
Um, another tip would be when you're working with kids, if they're not um, old enough to really see a project through to the end or if they get bored, you might have a few extra little projects that they can work on while you are painting the main piece. So that way you don't have to um, kind of worry about them getting bored and maybe going a little bit beyond what you wanted to have done. Another tip when you are working with um, distressing, make sure that whatever you have for a base coat, in this case, um, the body of the toy box was that bright yellow and the top I base coated in white. Um, make sure you keep that in mind as you put your over layers on to make sure those colors are all gonna work well together. I knew that um, this yellow would go well with the yellow underneath and all these colors would be very kind of vintage and circusy looking together. So um, when I distressed it back, I really like those little pops of yellow just kind of peeking out. If you did it in black and then you distressed it back, you'd have a very shabby chic kind of uh, French country look. It's all about the colors you choose and what you like for your home. And finally, you can um, either wax it if it's going to be indoors and not take a lot of wear and tear, but I really recommend a top coat, a urethane based top coat if you are doing a project for um, a kid's room or uh, on a porch or something where it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. That way it'll just protect your finish a little bit longer. But if it does get a nick or a scuff, it's really not a big deal because we distressed it so it's going to add to that um, authentic look to the piece. If you liked this project, if you'd like to try it yourself, check out the video description. I'll have links to all of the products I used from heirloomtraditionspaint.com. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.